Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lily. YouTube's copyright system is shit. That's an accepted fact. Another fact is that I've been more tolerant than many regarding copyright on YouTube and copyright law. While many other YouTubers call for copyright law to be changed to suit the internet or even declaring copyright itself to be bullshit as a concept, I have been as patient and tolerant of copyright law as I can possibly be. And I still am. I understand why copyright law exists, why it needs to exist, and I try very hard to not be taken in by fear-mongering. However, my patience for copyright law and my patience for YouTube's copyright policies are not one in the same. While the former is a flawed but beneficial set of laws, the latter is tediously designed power imbalance that actively ignores copyright law in its entirety. I have 183 videos currently uploaded to YouTube. Of those 183, over 80 of them have been flagged for copyright. Almost half of my channel's content is making money for somebody else, simply because they claimed a single 30 second clip of the video and that allows them to redirect all revenue to themselves. No copyright law in existence allows this to actually happen. A copyright holder can stop you from using their content, but they cannot decide to let you use it and then seize all your revenue, not unless you've signed a licensing contract with that copyright holder. This means that if a copyright holder decides to file a lawsuit against you for copyright infringement, you and I should be able to counter sue them for damages. Hasbro themselves have gotten extremely aggressive with copyright claims, manually triggering the content ID system to the point where I have actively gone out of my way to disrupt the system in small means that would force the company into filing a DMCA. And that's what I want them to do. Why? A DMCA is easier and more black and white to fight than a content ID claim. You see, if I dispute a claim, Hasbro has 30 days to decide if they agree or disagree with the dispute. And they almost universally disagree. Why? Because they can. And no other reason. If I then file an appeal, it will take another 30 days before it wears off, where Hasbro's only option is to release the claim or file a takedown. A counter notification gives Hasbro a mere 10 days to file a lawsuit against me. And not only is filing a lawsuit expensive and time consuming for them, if they lose that lawsuit, they lose the ability to not only file claims on my videos, but on similar videos from other YouTubers, which is to say, a lot of YouTubers. But instead they fight tooth and nail to keep a monetization claim because they suffer no consequences and only ever benefit from the system. The aggressive claims have gotten so bad that I briefly considered scrapping my most popular series in a minute entirely because it was so difficult to make any kind of revenue off of it. It was only because my Patreon has been doing so much better that I decided the losses were tolerable. I still fight the claims, but I am much less discouraged by them than I was before. I've always said that YouTube should not be obligated to be anybody's lawyer. That defending fair use is something done in a courtroom. That's where fair use is decided and the only place you can defend it. In a court, on a case-by-case -case basis. It makes perfect sense why YouTube isn't going to expend time and energy in defending my case of fair use. But here's the million dollar question. Why are they expending time and energy helping copyright holders make claims? YouTube is free from any liability in regards to copyright infringement. They've won this particular case multiple times after companies continued suing them over it. So why bother making the content ID claims in the first place? Content ID is the core fundamental foundation for all of YouTube's copyright issues as it automates the system. It means nobody at YouTube has to bother looking at anything they produce. It's YouTube's equivalent to Steam Greenlight, except a robot is doing the curating rather than a rabid group of morons drooling into a keyboard. One of the inherent equalizers of copyright law is that in many cases, suing somebody is a waste of time and money. Hasbro is never going to file a lawsuit against me, as it's very expensive and gives me the opportunity to counter sue for damages. That equalizer of risk to reward forces copyright holders to only fight the truly damaging content. None of that is true in a world of content ID and tediously long disputing process. Hasbro will not sue me because it's a waste of their time, so why the fuck are they allowed to waste my time? If YouTube had any sense at all, they'd tell copyright holders to go pound sand and give them a simple option. You want this video down? Fine. Go file a lawsuit with the content creator like you're supposed to. Or at the very least, don't allow a copyright holder to claim a video. Force them into a DMCA takedown, where the first dispute requires a lawsuit. In my opinion, the content ID system needs to be scrapped entirely. YouTube is already immune from lawsuits under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act because they are not the infringing party. So why does this system still continue to persist? If a copyright holder wants to have a video taken down, file for a takedown like you're supposed to. If YouTube is going to keep the content ID system, the appeal process has to be cut from it. A dispute should not give the copyright holder the ability to say no and force the user to do it again. The dispute itself should force the copyright holder to file a takedown or fuck off. The kicker is, YouTube wants claims, not takedowns. 
Why? Google still makes money regardless of who's monetizing it. And with no website equipped to actively compete with YouTube in both revenue and viewership, YouTube owns online content. But I don't see that stranglehold lasting much longer. I'm not talking about rival sites like Dailymotion or Vimeo. I'm talking about crowdfunding. Patreon exists as a method to support creators directly, and it is the safest form of crowdfunding both for the creator and the consumer. It doesn't take a lot of people to support a creator. Out of my 40,000 subscribers, only about 60 are pledged, and they currently bring in more money each month than YouTube does from ad revenue alone. Any well-supported content creator can then host their videos anywhere, Dailymotion, Vimeo, or any other similar site. YouTube's aggressive copyright policies and their policy on taking 50% of the revenue made off a video suddenly becomes less powerful. Extremely well-funded creators can even cease monetizing videos entirely. YouTube would be forced to change their policies once things start to adversely affect them. But that's a pipe dream. The most realistic way to force YouTube to change their policies is to make noise about it. The squeaky wheel gets the grease, and the more people start aggressively hounding Google itself, the more Google is going to be forced to change something. We have to stop blaming copyright holders and complaining about them. No, I'm serious. I don't blame companies like Hasbro for abusing the system when YouTube freely allows them to abuse it. YouTube could easily step in and intervene, but they won't, and that is who deserves the scorn and the anger. Not the copyright holders abusing a system that freely allows abuse, but the company that created the system in the first place. Copyright holders wouldn't be able to pull this crap if YouTube didn't let them do it in the first place. They would be forced to fight copyright claims in the manner they're supposed to, in court. But right now, Google has allowed copyright holders to work outside the law. It has allowed copyright holders to completely ignore fair use, file invalid takedowns without consequence, and effectively steal money from content creators that YouTube profits from. To me, that is unacceptable. For somebody in Google's position, it's disgraceful. And they knowingly do it because they take 50% of the revenue regardless of who the other 50% is going to. I'm not asking for compensation. I'm not asking for the money Hasbro has stolen from me to be retroactively repaid. And I'm well aware that some people are going to turn around and say that I'm making money off the back of other people's copyright. But as somebody who has prided herself on bringing the best possible experience and service to her viewers, even being the only person in the analysis community who doesn't even consider content droughts without explanation to be acceptable, I have to say that enough is enough, Google. I don't see how you could possibly continue to operate as if this was an okay way of doing business. Creating deliberately hostile work environments for your own employees simply because you either don't want to piss off copyright holders or because you don't care either way because you still make money regardless. You have too much power and therefore too much responsibility to be allowed to just get away with treating your content creators this way. Many content creators make their living off YouTube. This is their job. It's their livelihood. And while some people like Markiplier or Jim Sterling or PewDiePie or whatever make huge amounts of money, most people doing this for a living make enough money. Just enough. And every copyright claim to one of those people is a serious hit to their ability to support themselves. Not everybody has the following to supplement their income with Patreon. And many of the people who do have to push so hard to get people to subscribe that they cannot even make the content they're being paid to make anymore. Earlier this month, I lost the part-time job that paid the other half of my bills, and that scared me half to death because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make my next rent payment with half my income gone and so many of my videos being snatched up by Hasbro. I don't know how many of you have ever felt that kind of anxiety, but it's terrifying. And while I solved that problem by both finding a new job and my Patreon getting an explosion of new subscribers, there are many people who can't. And if even just one person suffers an inability to pay their living expenses as a result of Google's negligence, as a result of Google's incompetence, as a result of Google's inability to uphold the most basic standards of copyright law, then that to me is a tragedy and is one more than is acceptable. It's time for Google to get their shit together and start providing a better experience and work environment for the people who work for them. It's time to start making noise about it until Google can't ignore it anymore. It's easy to blame copyright holders for everything since the internet has this idealistic hatred of big corporations, so stoking that fire is extremely easy to do. But the fault here lies entirely with Google for creating a system that was designed from the ground up to be abused and then wash their hands of all responsibility. It's time for the noise to be delivered directly to Google itself. Where's the fair use, Google? And why are you allowing copyright holders to actively sidestep both it and copyright law itself? What you are doing is, no question about it, illegal. My name is Lily. I'll see you next time. Yeah. Heal. Let the darkness die.
Radio.